Hello, my name is Rick Radia, Product and Partnerships Manager at Audio Intelligence. I'm here today with Yesenia and Peter, and we'll be discussing the cocktail party problem. We're going to be talking about different audio processing techniques and how these compare to Audio Intelligence's ASO for Hearing. So Yesenia, please introduce yourself to the, our audience. Hi, I'm Yesenia Lacoutier. I'm Senior Research Engineer at Audio Intelligence. I have a background in audio signal processing, and psychoacoustics and audio reproduction. And I'm the lead engineer from the research group uh, for the hearing assistance technology. So I'm basically the bridge between research and developers, uh, trying to bring the research ideas into uh, a real product. Fantastic, thanks Yesenia. And Peter? Hi, I'm Peter Roberts. I'm a software engineer with a background in product development. Uh, audio intelligence, I'm on the hearing assistance team and for the last two years, we've been developing the ASO for Hearing solution. Um, I also like to bake cake for, for my colleagues. And we do appreciate those cakes. Thanks, Peter. Well, thank you both for joining us today. So one of the first signs of hearing loss is the inability to hear speech in noise. This is often referred to as a cocktail party problem. There's lots of consequences to this. In fact, people who experience a cocktail party problem often have listening fatigue. And sometimes when the situation gets so bad, they avoid the social situations altogether. Our research indicates that over 80% of 40 to 64 year olds struggle to hear in busy and noisy environments. Now it would be great to understand from you, Yesenia, what solutions are there in the market today to solve the cocktail party problem? So before answering the question, I think it would be a good idea to, to understand what is the cocktail party problem. When our hearing is healthy, our brains are really, really good at extracting uh, single sources out of a complex mix. So if we are in a party, uh, we are able to follow a conversation, even though there are a lot of people just bubbling around us. That's usually not a problem for young people. But as we age, we start losing this ability, especially if we start getting a hearing loss. And that's what we call the cocktail party problem. So this inability to extract the speech out of a very complex mixture. It's not just a speech and noise, because it's more competing sources at the same time. So one of the solutions that we find in the market uh, is noise reduction. And these techniques try to su suppress the noise in the mixture. For that, you need to model the noise. That's usually model as a random diffuse noise. The problem with these techniques is that if there's competing speech, they usually fail to suppress that because speech is not random and diffuse. So people wearing hearing aids, for example, which uh, usually have these kind of techniques, even if they have really, really good noise reduction algorithm, they will still struggle if there are more people talking at the same time. Another technique is beamforming. It's very similar to noise reduction, but there you can use also um, the advantage of having multiple microphones and try to focus on a location. So let's say I just want to focus to the front because that's the person I'm interested in and suppress everything else. Uh, and that works as long as the noise is not very loud and there's no competing speech again because everything that is on the direction you're focusing in is going to be amplified. So if there's a lot of noise and somebody's speaking behind you, you will still struggle to kind of extract that conversation of interest. Some of those audio processing techniques that Yesenia described can be found in traditional interventions, things such as hearing aids, cochlear implants or assistive, assistive listening devices. Um, and they can help to a degree but because they just amplify the sound, they can really struggle in situations where there's lots of background noise or there are many different voices and sound sources competing. As I said, they amplify the sound, but they don't always improve speech intelligibility. And more recently, there are other players entering the market. So um, things like mobile phones and earbuds. And we're starting to see hearing solutions integrated into these kind of products, but they're still tending to use the traditional audio processing techniques that Yatanya was describing. Thanks, Peter. So I think from the sounds of it, this cocktail party problem, because it's so complex, is quite a difficult problem to solve. What are the limitations that you would see when it comes to 
AI-based solutions or digital noise reduction or beamforming? What would be the key limitations of each of those? With beamforming, one of the issues is that it selects all of the sound in one direction. So if there's a noise source behind the speaker you're, you want to listen to, um, the, the beamforming device will amplify the noise as well as the voice of the person you're trying to listen to. Sorry, that's not a not single <laughs> software. <laughs> oh, we swap it. <laughs> Do like, you know, Merkel? Thank you. Oh, is this it? Well, I've got this piece of paper right there, yeah. <laughs>